So today we're going to talk about the EG4 12,000 XP inverters. As you know, I have five of them right now. One is currently connected. The other four I need to get connected up. But I've had the first one for 90 days now, and I wanted to give you a review on it, give you the positives and negatives, what I like about it, and then the improvements that I would recommend for it. Let's begin. So here's my existing inverter that's been running for 90 days, and I haven't had any sort of issues with it at all. The power has been very stable, haven't had any issues with surges or, um, you know, low voltage or, or anything of the such. So what do I like about it? I like that it's a single unit, that it's all in one, and it has a lot of the different uh, breakers built into it. It does have the 300 uh, amp br uh, battery breaker. It's got the smart load and it has uh, for turning the load on and off. And of course your, uh, your EPS switch on the side. So it does save you money on the installation because you don't need to purchase as many components as if you had a separate system. Now it is a high frequency inverter which Pretty much most of them these days are high frequency inverters. Uh, if you can find a low frequency one, uh, those may be a little bit better in some situations. Uh, but these new high frequency ones have a lot of protections built into them. Now I have it connected up to 24 lead time batteries. So one of the important things with this inverter is you have to ensure that you have um, a certain amount of uh, amperage that you can send to it uh, so then that way it will be able to produce um, its full output. I believe that they say that you need to have a minimum of 300 amp hours of batteries per unit um, but for mine I've got uh, 1200 amp hours currently connected. Important things that you are going to want to do Definitely have a T-class fuse uh, connected to the inverter just in case you did run into any problems uh, that would blow. Uh, it's not something that I've seen any uh, manufacturer put into their inverters, but it would be kind of nice to have a T-class fuse uh, built into an inverter. Uh, that way, if it does go, you know, you know that there's uh, a, a serious issue at that point. Um, I do like the display on it. That seems to work good. I've heard some people say that the display is a little bit small, a little bit hard to read, but to be honest, it works just fine for me. I've been pretty happy with it. Other things to, uh, to note on it, the fans for the most part are pretty quiet. Uh, the only time that the fans get super loud, and I don't know why it does it. I do have the upgraded firmware on it, um, but if it is charging and you have a large solar input, sometimes the fans will uh, spin up and get pretty loud for a moment there, usually about 15 seconds or so, and then it will uh, spin back down and then it's quiet again. And it'll do it every once in a while, but it's, it's not too often. And I notice it mainly during midday when I'm getting the, uh, the most uh, solar input uh, for that day. What the manufacturer can do, um, update the software on the EG4. That way the fans will um, ramp up a little bit slower and run a little bit longer so it doesn't have to ramp up the fans quite as high. Because it sounds like the fans do max out for a moment there as it spins up which would shorten the longevity of the fan. So maybe just uh, have a slower ramp up on it or a minimum amount of flow to keep that ramp up from happening. But under load, you know, running a bunch of devices in the shop, I, I rarely hear any noise from it. it. It's only when charging. So the ramp up for that works pretty well. Other things that, uh, that EG4 may want to do is on the, uh, on the output, it does have a lot of protections built into it. If there's a way to, full, uh, to further isolate the DC and AC sections, uh, that would be good, or, or at least, you know, maybe a technical 
um, description on how that that's done. Uh, that would be nice. Now for mine, I do have T-class fuses on the DC side and then also we'll have it on the AC side. But if you can build some additional protections in there and go kind of above and beyond what everybody else does, I, I think that would really set uh, EG4 apart from, uh, from the rest of the, uh, uh, the inverters out there. As far as powering everything in the shop, I really don't have any issues. It's powering, you know, all the lights right now. It's powering an AC. Um, I can power all the lights in the shop at the same time as well and run both ACs and really have no issues. I can even do all of that. And if you've seen my last video, it'll power, um, you know, a lift at the same time as well and, and a, uh, an air compressor. One thing that I may do is for my air compressor and for my lifts actually have uh, a soft start from it. Uh, one thing that I notice is if I try to lift a car, which works phenomenally well for that, sometimes I'll see the lights flicker just a little bit, which is telling me, you know, I really should get a soft start for it. Uh, it does have three horsepower motor on the lift, but um, if you can put a soft start on your devices, so if this is power in your house, maybe put a soft start on your uh, HVAC. If it's used for a shop like mine, you know, maybe each one of the motors you put a, uh, a soft start on it. And what that will do is it'll make it a little bit easier on the inverter. So that way uh, it will last much longer. So I'll give you a, a quick, uh, so you can see it here, quick demo. <coughs> You can see that that uh, really, really quick flicker. Not a big deal at all. But, um, yeah, I'm going to put soft starts and everything. So think about that if you're installing an inverter, having soft starts on your big motors. Uh, it just does help, and it will help make the, uh, the inverter last a little bit longer. Uh, other things that I like about it, I mean, it's just rock solid, reliable. I did get a uh, second unit. I did mount them a little too close to each other. So I've got a little vent to help deflect the output of one so it doesn't go into the other. Uh, I'll probably have a metal divider at some point, put it in between. But um, I got the second one to kind of reduce the load on the first one. And in that way, you know, these will last uh, uh, much longer, but no issues. I mean, it's, it's, it's been more reliable than my power company because at my house, the power goes out typically once a month for a couple hours. Uh, sometimes it's more than that, but it's short periods. And it's funny because, you know, every time the power goes out at the house, you know, I'm grabbing all my uh, uh, power stations and I'm bringing a few of them over to the house and, you know, plugging in the freezer, uh, the deep freezer that is, the refrigerator, maybe powering, um, you know, a smaller AC unit or, or whatever that I would need to power. And I've got to do that about once a month. Hence why I've got this whole setup that will be hooked up to power the house. But this is more reliable than, um, than my energy company is. And uh, I've been, you know, I can't say enough good things about it. That's probably why I make so many videos on the EG4 12,000 XPs. I mean, they're just, they're just rock solid units. So I'm, I'm quite happy with them. Uh, once again, maybe add some additional protections into them, uh, built into the device to make it a little bit easier because, you know, not everybody's going to, um, you know, buy a bunch of, uh, T class fuses and hook them all up, but, just uh, j just a, a, a thought to kind of throw out there. If you have any questions for me on the EG4 12,000 XPs, uh, let me know. And uh, when I go to start installing these, I'll, I'll do some more videos on it as far as hooking them up, wiring up, uh, setting up uh, the parallel settings on it, and, uh, you know, powering all this good stuff up. So that's it. Once again, thanks for watching Mike's Garage. Please like, subscribe, and leave a comment.